everyone and welcome to the first episode of You Don't Even Know with the Data Book team at Hashed Australia. Hi everyone. Hey. Uh, my name is Sarah and I'm the Digital Marketing Coordinator here at Hashed Australia and look after all the social media on Data Book and we'll go around and introduce ourselves. So, Hi, I'm Kelly. I'm a Junior Marketing Executive here at Hashed. I'm Ashley. I'm the Children's Marketing Publicity Manager. I'm Andrew and I have a job title that I think is lost outside of the world of publishing. So let's just say I work in sales and I talk about a lot of books. He's very days. important. Very important. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kim and also on the lost publishing position, I'm yeah. a product executive. Uh, I work for bringing in stock and getting it out to stores. But we love them anyway. <laughs> Despite our rubbish complicated titles. Right. <laughs> That's how we roll. That's how we roll. So now we're just going to have a little chat about The Dreamwalker by Victoria Carlos and that is our date of the month and um, I really love this book. Uh, I really love the setting and really um, getting you into that headspace of Digger's Landing which I believe is going to is in like Queensland? North, 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 North Queensland. Queensland and just this town in such isolation that they can do such kind of terrible things can happen there it's, and people are kind of cool with it because they're so isolated it's and a bit crazy like I think a lot of people who live in small towns are going to really appreciate how this is, is set up because they are they do have like 12 families and everyone is interconnected it's, and they yeah. know everyone's histories and it's really powerful way of looking at a small town yeah yeah as someone from a small town it is and that's and I think that's some, where some of the best YA stories and like um coming up through the age groups and stuff like that happens because it is a goldfish bowl and you know when you're young you feel like kind of the whole world's watching where in actual fact you get older and you feel like relatively yeah, insignificant in a good way it's liberating <laughs> but in a small town and particularly something like in the Dreamwalker, mm. it is magnified it's really interesting to see yeah, how yeah. everyone interacts I think they do the bullying like very well in it as well mm. like just it's very subtly put throughout it but it is very um like heartbreaking to, to watch and to remember how it felt when you were younger in a small town and everyone knows everyone's business and not being able to get away from it I think the whole that whole story of just wanting to leave and waiting until that time ticking until you're 18 you can just get out of town yeah. so and sometimes that not being possible because yeah. you have to look after your family yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. and um, the cover. so this so cover nice. is gorgeous Love it. It's beautiful. And uh, Victoria was actually part of the Queensland Writers Centre Manuscript Development Program uh, through Hashit Australia. And we actually have a really cool clip of Victoria talking to her editor, Kate Stevens. So have a look. Now, there's, there's quite a few um, big issues addressed in this book. Um, can you talk a little bit about what inspired you to write about these issues? Yeah, I guess I am. Um, I didn't kind of think, oh, I'm going to write about these issues when I was writing about them. And I guess maybe that's because I grew up in a small community as well. Um, and I think there's issues for young people in this community, in these kind of communities, like maybe um, drinking and violence and um, poverty, like not actually having enough money to eat. And they're inherited issues that these kind of kids and young people have to deal with. And for me, it was really important to write about them because I didn't really read about um, characters like Lucy or Polly or Tom um, growing up and I, I just kind of wanted to tell their story. Awesome and so you can also check out uh, lots of other footage with Victoria on our data book YouTube channel including her reading the first chapter. Ooh, <laughs> yes. exclusive. So, yeah. so we all grew up with Australian YA and I think those books introduced us to a lot of heavy themes which you can't really find in a lot of uh, US YA, um, I find it gets, it, Australian YA it can be much grittier. Mm. So what were kind of the Australian YA books we loved when we were growing up? Well, I, this is going to be a long story, so sorry. Um, I, I used to get lost in US sort of fantasy and uh, contemporary YA. My mum got a bit um, mental when I was a teen and said that I, I couldn't stick in that genre forever so she made a deal with me that I had get to read one of my own books and then she'd give me a book and one of those books was Tim Winton's Cloud Street so not typically YA but 
Um, it was uh, one that had young characters growing up, mm. and it just uh, it stuck with me ever since. Though I did um, lie occasionally and tell her I hadn't finished one of my own books, so she couldn't give me mine. <laughs> but um, that was yeah. one of the ones that it was one of the first ones she Sneaky gave me, thing. and it just stuck with me forever. It's a good one. Yeah, yeah. Cloud Street works. I, I think I think for for me, um, Isabel Carmody's The Gathering was the first. I think probably the, that you would classify as a YA book because I guess growing up I didn't really, and I was the same, like I came from a family that, that read quite a bit, particularly mum, and I would always dip into her bookcase and do that sort of stuff. Read a few Wintons, but I remember the gathering and I, I remember going to, I think, I, and I grew up in the country, and being on a bus down to Melbourne for like a, I can't even remember, it was, I think it was like a sports camp or something like that, and reading it, and it scared the be Jesus out of me um, and I've been yeah lucky enough like Isabel Carmody obviously amazing and, and spoken to her about it and and she's talked about her own thoughts around the book but it's 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 a really intense confronting book but it's sort of at the same time like you said with Australian it is set in a sort of slightly dystopian fantasy sort of everything's a bit magical and stuff like that but it really confronted me in ways that normal sort of contemporary Australian writing up to that stage that I could have read like Cloud Street that were more like sort of family sagas and things like that didn't and sort of opened my eyes to this new world and way of writing so I kind of loved it but at the same time it was confronting which I think is kind of the point yeah. a lot of YA. Yeah. Um, when I was in year eight the book that was really hard to borrow from the library because there was such a backlog on it was Finding Cassie Crazy by Jacqueline Moriarty. I love that one too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, so I finally got to read it and it was Again, it really confronting themes of like like bullying and um, mental illness and kind of I went to an all girls Catholic school, so I also See read that. reading that book. <laughs> I learned just how horrible teenage boys can be. <laughs> so that was um, that was my favorite when I was in high school. Preparing you for yeah. the world. Yeah. <laughs> I read a lot as a teenager. I think the one the Australian YA that stood out to me the most was. Um, Looking for Ella Brandy, but also Saving Francesca. I was obsessed with that book. I probably read it four times in one year, and every time I read it, I would be like depressed for the whole week yeah. afterwards. <laughs> yeah, but it was so good. Like her characters are so real. It's just so it's like effortless reading. But I love yeah Molina's works because a lot of them are set in Sydney, so there was mm -hmm. places yeah. to identify with as well. When you're reading like outside or US books, you can't always picture where they are, but really easy to picture where she is. Yeah, it's, it's kind like of the relatable yeah. setting and then the relatable characters as well. It's kind of surreal if you're reading a lot of overseas US and UK way, like I think I was and a lot of us do, and then you read about the local locations and things like that. It's crazy. It feels like they're writing for you because yeah, you missed not exposed that. I, was think, way, eh? I think that's how I felt with reading John Marston growing up, the Tomorrow When the War Began series, because I was from small country town. And so looking for Ella Brandy and stuff like that, that seemed like a foreign country to me. I'd never been, <laughs> yeah. lived in a big city. Whereas these kids riding their bikes kind of miles to each other's property and going out bush camping and stuff was something I could definitely relate to. Less so obviously the invasion and everything like that. <laughs> but well, I, Aubrey and Wodonga had that relationship growing up. <laughs> well, yeah, you grew up, yeah, so there was definitely the Wodonga, it was all very North and South Korea. Um, <laughs> but definitely that kind of coming of age, what, what teenagers could possibly do under strain and stuff mm -hmm. like that, I always found really interesting. What do you think of the film? I loved it, actually. Yeah. There needs to be a second one. I <laughs> think Get on it. One. What is going on yeah, with that? Yeah, I thought that it was one of the best pieces of kind of Australian cinema that had been yeah. created lately, especially for like that like audience group of like younger and really good talent. And they mm -hmm. depicted what happened in the book so well. So yeah. I'm hanging on for a second the one. TV series? No, I have not dipped into that. <laughs> <laughs> no. I didn't have any good question. things about it, but yeah. yeah. I so. went to a test screening of that movie before they had the special effects. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh wow. Green <laughs> so good. <laughs> <laughs> but still good, I still really yeah. enjoyed it. <laughs> so we'll move into favorite things now. Um, so, we're going to talk about some of the things that we're enjoying at the moment and some of the things you may or may be interested in or not. So, start off with you, Jenks. Um, I'm obsessed with Sarah J Mass at the moment. I know, very late to the party, but I have just devoured the Throne of Glass series and A Court of Throne and Roses and I can't stop, guys. I am seriously obsessed. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's true, she's got on the box set on her desk at work. We didn't even publish the books, but uh, it, she, her obsession is growing. Loud and proud. <laughs> how, how quick are you knocking over Sarah J Maas? Um, I think I've read eight books in a month. 
So, <laughs> every <laughs> night is all I do. I've read yeah. eight books uh, this year. Yeah. <laughs> if you can beat Jenks, leave it in the comments yeah. below. Because Jenks isn't competitive at all, so we'll see how that goes. Hashtag beat Jenks. So, I think we're both kind of a bit obsessed with this at the moment, is Friends. <laughs> I've never <laughs> seen Friends before and it's amazing and I'm up to season six now and I've only been watching it for like three weeks. <laughs> Are you curious about um, all the Friends gifts that have been turning up on Twitter? That's because Sarah's just started watching. Yes, yes. <laughs> can, I, can I have a quick... Before we started filming we were talking about what we're going to do for our favourite things and Sarah said Friends and I thought you meant Friends, not the TV <laughs> show, friends. but oh. actual, <laughs> my actual... How great are Friends right now? And <laughs> I thought, I've just got some Friends. It's, you know? it's consistently on trend. That's what I liked about the decision. But Friends makes more, makes more yeah, sense. Yeah, but now. it wouldn't work for me because I don't have any friends. Oh. That is not true. <laughs> I'm your friend. <laughs> but I feel like we should do the Friends clap to move on to the next. Yeah. 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 Ready? Yeah. Yes. That was pretty good. Wow. I'm doing a bit of a throwback at the moment as well. I just started rewatching Don't Judge Me, Dawson's Creek. Yes. But I skipped season one because I think it like, no. gets better. Pacey does. gets better. Yeah, season one comes a bit too much for me. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. much angst. Pacey's yeah. Creek. That's what it is. Yeah. yeah. Oh. It should be Pacey's Creek. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm one episode in, but. No, There's something fun about rewatching TV shows though, yeah. and if they're things that you grew up with, as well as things that other people grew up with, and now you can all talk to each other about them, it's. There's something fun about it. Yeah. I like rewatching shows. And being thrown oh, yeah. back to those fashions of like the 90s as yeah. well. Yeah. amazing. It's cool, but yes. that's what streaming does. That's what books have always done, but that's what streaming TV does now. Someone was telling me, my nephew was telling me how good a show Prison Break was. And I was like, I haven't had a conversation with anyone about Prison Break. <laughs> Like oh, 10 years, ever? even though it's back on. Um, and now because it's streaming, it's happening. Yeah. And Friends is getting a, yeah. a love again. Buffy's having a bit of a revival as mm. well. 20th anniversary. God, I feel old. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking about when I was watching Dawson's Creek, how like, all these new streaming shows are completely changing like the nature of TV. Like Dawson's Creek was such a big deal back in the day. Yeah. But it's harder for shows to be that kind of big deal now because mm -hmm. there's so much choice. So spread out. But it's yeah. also that with the streaming things, you can just keep watching them straight away, marathoning them. Yeah. And before it was like all that anticipation of finding out what happened next and you gotta wait a whole week or a whole four months for the next season and now it's right there. Hey, can I ask a question on the panel before we go to my favorite <laughs> things? That's what we're gonna do sure. here. Do you, do, you think, do you think that streaming TV shows will affect how we read? Do you think that because we're all sort of more binge watchers now, that will be like Jenks you were saying that you read eight Sarah J Maas yeah. books? Yeah. Do you think, in 10 years we'll all be binge readers and we'll just like wait for a series to finish and then knock them yeah, all over. Or, or we publish the whole series yeah, from the get-go. Get what do you think? Or like Kindle series and how they yeah, do maybe. that sort of reading yeah. in short bite-sized pieces, maybe. Mm -hmm. I know. Maybe the instant satisfaction kind of yeah. trend. I was just saying, I know that sometimes you read the first book in like a fantasy series and then you decide that, oh, you, you can't read the next book when it comes out because you don't want to be waiting that long so you wait till the final book in the series and then reread the first yeah. one through so I know I, I do it sometimes not all we're the time. all very impatient I'm not that patient yeah. but um, there's something to be said about waiting for something though it kind of makes it more it's rewarding true. I, I, don't, I don't think I like a book that I really love or a series I love being there on a shelf and me not touching it for another year or six months I think yeah. I'd rather read it then hit it all in one big gobble, mm -hmm. but still. Yeah. It's Depends how complicated something is as well, though. If, like, there's so much you need to remember, and you have to wait 12 months to find out. Oh, like, forget yeah. it. Yeah. Sometimes you need to reread. Yeah, rereading is fun. I hey. think yeah. the, I think having them all out and ready to go would really help, or really be appreciated by the YA community. Mm. Well, tell us, yeah. tell us about that YA community. Would it? <laughs> tell us your thoughts. <laughs> See Andrew, what, there? what are you enjoying? Uh, at the moment, um, I'm enjoying a Lydia Ruffles book that I think we might talk a little bit later yeah. that's coming soon. But oh, at yeah. the moment, I'm enjoying uh, music in Australia because at this point, I talk to friends overseas and they're constantly telling me that they're seeing this person here, this person here that will never come. Splendour in the Grass is happening in a week and a half. Cool. And there are a lot of music, uh, there are a lot of bands and people coming out here for sideshows. So at the moment, I'm actually enjoying Australia getting some decent acts. So the who, next month. who in particular? Well, the XX, I'm a bit uh, of a fan like for, so that's cool. Queens of a Stone Age will be floating out oh, as well. Wow. So, favourite things at the moment, just trying to put everything in place. And 
actually get some good acts in Australia. So that's my favourite thing. Yeah. Are you a Spotify user, Andrew? Big Spotify user, yep. uh, like Apple Music as well. Um, at the moment, between both of them, I do like Spotify. I actually know um, one of my friends who's got a job doing, uh, or friend of a friend, a job doing the playlists on Spotify, which might Those be the greatest great, job in the I world. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah I'm, that I'm, would be a really fun job. Yeah, nearly as good as working. At a show. Yeah, nearly as good as our job. <laughs> <laughs> Kim books music. Um, lately, I've been enjoying uh, rereading Sarah Jessen's novels. She had a new novel out this year, Once and for All, and I just went ballistic um, because I adore Sarah Jessen. She's my comfort read. Nice. Um, so I've been going back to her books every couple of books because I want more comfort reads. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, if you've been on the Data Book channels recently, you would have seen that we have a read-along going on at the moment on Goodreads, and we're reading Six of Crows, the first book in a duology by Leigh Bardugo, and we want you to join in too. We have all the questions up on our Goodreads group at the moment, so um, come on in and have a chat with us because we love to have a chat. We know that not everyone lives somewhere where you can be in a book club or have the same group of friends that are reading the same stuff. So we want to be able to provide that for you guys and have it with you and just be able to chat books and cute boys in books and amazing <laughs> scenes in books all day. So come safe and safe space, all opinions are welcome. Yes. That's true. <laughs> Even if we yeah. fight about our favourite characters, it's with love. <laughs> yeah. P.S. The best characters are Nina and Matias. Oh. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> no, we don't agree. <laughs> <laughs> And you can also join in on Twitter with hashtag uh, DAB Book Club. And you may see we've actually gone comparing our Six of Crows gang to Friends characters. And Leigh Bardugo chimed in on who she thinks Ross should be. So uh, come on in and have a chat. And find out. And find out. Uh, let us know in the comments who you think should be uh, in the Six of Crows gang a Friends character. We still can't decide who, should, who Matthias should be. Except that Lee. Guaranteed that it's not Ross. It's not Ross. <laughs> <laughs> we were right as yeah, well. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was adamant. Yeah. We also have a really cool comp going up on Twitter and Instagram where we're going to have a Polaroid scavenger hunt for when Dimple met Rishi, which so is just, amazing. Yes, yeah, we yeah. love, love, love this book. It. So, so good. Much so good. <laughs> um, and we want you to participate in a scavenger hunt just like Dimple and Rishi have to do at the beginning of the book and we have four challenges so your Frodo has to incorporate orange, cold, flowers and dance. Uh, we have a really awesome prize for you guys to win. You're going to win all of our date of the months for the year which is a total of seven books plus some awesome fan art by Jackie Money. So. <laughs> Okay, so now we have our favourite segment that you have been waiting for, you just don't know that you were waiting for it. It's our speedball questions. So Kim's going to pick one out for us. We don't know what it is and we're just going to have to answer it as fast as we yeah, can. Quickly. This is terrifying. Oh God, Are you going to answer it too, Kim? I know. I have the piece of paper. Um, the suspense. What would your death row meal be? Oh, oh, spaghetti bolognese. <laughs> Straight away. Yeah. yeah no, I'm a spag bowl girl yeah. as well, um, but I'd want to work chocolate in there as well somehow. Which is Are we allowed to dinner and dessert? I don't know what I'd pick for entree. Ice cream for dessert. Uh, <laughs> have lover. Oh. Love cheesecake. Or chocolate cake. Back what are you going to put on top of it? Yeah, chocolate cheesecake. <laughs> Maybe ice cream. I can't pick. This is too hard. And chips. Oh, and I'd want little Jim Sims as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, we're not a death row sports board. <laughs> mine is so pedestrian. Mine would be the um, the three piece. <laughs> the three piece. <laughs> FC. <laughs> I guess I thought you were going to say. No, like, mine would be the three. Can... No, not KFC. The superior chicken. Three piece. Bondi Bites meal oh, from a Porto's with oh, Prego sauce. Oh, I love Prego sauce. But to drink, I would have a caramel frappuccino from Starbucks. God, I'm hungry now. <laughs> Hashtag oh. sponsor. Am I allowed to pick an all-you-can-eat buffet? Yeah. Yes. Yep. <coughs> cool. Can I bring it to the prison for you? As yes. <coughs> Because mine will now be ashes as well. Yeah. Yeah. Because we're all on death row together. Because maybe we can have this. Like, yeah. What do we do to deserve being on death row? Oh, that's good. Don't have to worry about food poisoning. So definitely all buffet. That works. Oh yeah. Good I would. Food. I would have. I would. I think I would have a stuffed crust pizza from when they first came in oh, when I was like yes. five. Before you realise the dangers of eating seven kilos of cheese, <laughs> I think I would. I would have. What are that? you even? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're not living to experience the dangers, you're fine. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. No. 
All right, Great. so that's it for episode one of You Don't Even Know. Let us know in the comments below if, first of all, what's your favourite Love Oz YA book? Um, what would be your death row meal? And um, we want to know what you want us to talk about next episode. Um, don't forget to follow us on all our social media channels. Uh, we love to say hi and see you next time. Thanks for coming. Bye. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. I wanted to do that to set you up again. Oh, so good. Was that okay? Should I do that again? No, that was great. That was good. Okay. <laughs>